So for me, rethinking is a skill set, but it starts with a mindset. I've spent the last few years studying the mental models that make it easier and harder to think again. And you can organize them in a little bit of a hierarchy. You may work with some people who spend too much of their time thinking like preachers, prosecutors, or politicians, even though they've never worked in any of those fields. And I want to give you a chance to think about which of these traps is most common for you. So if you go into preacher mode, you're basically proselytizing your own views. In prosecutor mode, you're attacking somebody else's views. And in politician mode, you don't even bother to listen to people unless they already agree with your views. I think that's a scary way to live, all three of those. And all of us, it turns out from the data, have one vice that dominates among those three. I'll tell you mine is prosecutor mode. I had a student once call me a logic bully and then explain to me that it wasn't a compliment. And I was like, what do you, what do you mean people don't love like being hammered with facts and data until they admit how wrongheaded their beliefs were? So how many of you are occasional fellow prosecutors more often than you would like? Raise your hands. And where are the preachers who love to drink the Kool-Aid and then serve it to every single person you meet? Okay, and then politicians, don't raise your hands, your peers already know who you are, no. Somebody asked me recently, is there anything worse than being a full-time preacher, prosecutor, or politician at work? And the only thing I could think of was cult leader, uh, which, yes, is even worse. But look, whatever, whatever your tendency here, like, there is a time and a place to preach, prosecute, or politic. I think the problem is, though, that when you get stuck in one of these modes, you become too convinced that you're right and other people are wrong. So they need to rethink their assumptions, but you have already seen the light and found the truth. How do you avoid that mistake? My favorite alternative is to think more like a scientist. When I say think like a scientist, I do not mean that you need to buy a microscope or a telescope. I mean that good scientists have the humility to know what they don't know and the curiosity to seek new knowledge. They don't let their ideas become part of their identity. They are as motivated to look for reasons why they might be wrong as they are to search for reasons why they must be right. And we have a growing body of evidence from careful randomized controlled experiments that if we teach business leaders and nonprofit leaders and government leaders how to think like scientists, they actually make better decisions. My favorite example is a series of experiments that were done with startup founders, where thousands of entrepreneurs are randomly assigned to either a scientific thinking group or a control group. And that's all that happens. You're just taught to think like a scientist. Every strategy you formulate is a hypothesis. Every decision you make is an A-B test. And that's, that's the whole intervention. You follow these startups for a year, and guess what? The founders in the scientific thinking group bring in, on average, more than 40x the revenue of the control group. 40x. That is a staggering effect from a simple mindset shift. The key mechanism behind it is they are more than twice as likely to pivot away from bad ideas. The poor founders in the control group, when they launch a product or a service that bombs, they still preach that they were right, they prosecute their critics for being wrong, and they politic by lobbying the board to stay with the status quo. And that leads them into a trap that some of you have lived personally. It's called escalation of commitment to a losing course of action. It's when you make a decision, it does not work out as you hoped, and instead of rethinking it, you double down and invest more time, more energy, more money. Sounds like a sunk cost trap, but it's more than that. More than the economic factors, it is ego. I don't want to look like an idiot. I don't want other people to think I'm a bad decision maker. So I work really hard to prove that I made a good choice all along. Learning to think like a scientist stops escalation of commitment. All of a sudden, people are like, huh, I guess that experiment falsified my hypothesis. Now I need to rethink my vision or my strategy or my market to try to find better fit. When we teach people to think like scientists, they begin to listen to the ideas that make them, th make them think hard, not just the opinions that make them feel good. They also start to surround themselves with different kinds of people, the people who challenge their thought process, not just the ones who agree with their conclusions.